What's going on guys? Hey, it's Brett uh, here again for another video. Um, today we're going to talk about what do you need to do, what's the process, what do you need, and how you get your yard from mowing tall to mowing short. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so today we're going to talk about what does it take, what are the steps, what do you have to do to get your yard from long to short. Um, I've had a ton of people email me or message me or comment on these videos and ask, you know, what's the process, you know, how do I do it? Um, is it hard? Is it something that you can really do as a homeowner? Or uh, or is it really going to be out of my league? So today I wanted to talk about really the process and uh, highlight all the tools that I've used to uh, get my yard to where it is now from where it was. Alright, so really the biggest thing, uh, the biggest difference maker, uh, and, and, and the biggest thing that you're going to have to have to mow your yard short is a real mower, obviously. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I don't have the Toro anymore. Um, Connor came and stole my lawnmower, um, took it back north to back to Connor Ward, man. So, I'm now just the John Deere. Um, but, the John Deere is a great option. Um, the Toro is a great option. You know, you really can't go wrong when you go into a real mower situation like the, uh, cut all this crap out. All right, so when it comes to real mowers, in my personal opinion, greens mowers are the way to go. Your, your high end, you know, professional grade, you know, along the lines of the John Deere, the Toro Greens Master Series, um, Jacobson's, uh, mowers like that. But if you're just getting started, you know, I, I know several people who have McLean's or True Cuts and uh, have fantastic results from them. I know they can be a little bit more finicky and it's harder to find people to work on them. Um, and the parts aren't necessarily as easy to come by, but they still do a great job. I've seen several yards that are mowed with McLean's or True Cuts um, or California trimmers and they look fantastic. So really the first thing that you have to do if you want to mow short is you have to get a real mower. And even if it's a manual real mower, um, you can mow short with a manual real mower. You know, it's, it's a little bit more work, but it can be done and it can look great. Um, I know Ryan Knorr has showed off his, uh, his, his manual real mower in a couple of videos when uh, he did his renovation. Um, so it can be done and it can look great. Um, so don't let that, the price of one of these, keep you out of mowing short with a real mower. Um, all right, so let's talk about price. Um, when it comes to a brand new commercial grade greens mower, you know, you're talking a lot of money. But nobody that I know personally has bought a brand new greens mower, you know, from Toro or from John Deere or anything like that. Most everybody I know who uh, is mowing with the greens mower bought it either through an auction. Um, there's several good options. I know Weeks Auction Company does auctions several times a year. That's actually where I got my mower from. Um, and the Weeks Auction Company is based out of Georgia. Car. Um, also, um, I know Connor 
bought one of his, I didn't, maybe both of his mowers um, used off of Craigslist or the local classifieds from either another homeowner or from a golf course. So if you're looking for a greens mower, that's the way I would go. Is I would I would look for auctions that are close to you or even you know a national auction. Um, just know that if you buy this from a national auction, you're gonna have to pay for shipping. So that's gonna be added to the price. Um, so either an auction, um, the classifieds through like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or something like that. Um, but there, but there, there's deals to be found. You know, I got this mower super cheap. I paid hundred and ten dollars for this. So, you know, don't don't let the initial price scare you away. Now, you can go with a, uh, like I said, a True Cut or a McLean or even a Swordman. You know, a lot of guys are using the Swordmans, and you can buy those brand new for like twenty five hundred bucks. You know, I know that's that's a lot of money to some people. It's a lot of money to me. I wouldn't spend that kind of money on it. Um, but if you don't want the hassle or the headache of looking through, digging through auctions and classifieds and stuff like that, you know, you could buy a Swordman or a McLean or a True Cut for around that $2,000 to $2,500 mark and get a good, good homeowner unit. Um, so yeah, that's... Uh, that's about it on the green mowers. Um, yeah, I know we've talked about them a lot. They're they're a little bit more uh, maintenance, but overall, you know, if you want to go short, it's the only way to go. Yeah, it, if with with mowing short, a real mower is going to give you that consistent cut that you're not going to get with a mower that has a deck on it. You know, when you lower a mower with a deck on it going to have a wheel that goes down into a dip and it's going to scalp or yeah you don't get any of that scalping with these uh, real mowers all right so the next most important piece of equipment in my uh, you know the way i see it is a landscape rake uh, and what you're going to need this landscape rake for is for leveling if you're going to go all in and you really want to mow with the greens mower and you want to mow short and you want to keep that nice crisp tight look, you've got to level. You have got to level your lawn. If you don't level your lawn, you're going to get dips and you're going to get bumps and you're going to get scalping. And you know, even with having a greens mower, you're still going to get them. Uh, when I leveled my yard, I saw a huge difference. So, you need to get yourself a landscape rake. They're like 30 to 45 bucks. Um, and you wanna get something that's at least three feet long so you can span over the dips and the bumps in your yard when you're leveling. Uh, leveling will make the biggest difference in the world. You know, I saw, when I started my leveling project, I saw the biggest improvement after I leveled because I wasn't getting any more scalping, I wasn't getting any more high spots or low spots or anything like that. Um, and like I said, that's that's all because of leveling. So get yourself a landscaping rake, get you a bunch of sand and level your yard. Next. All right, so the next thing that you need uh, for maintaining your yard and shortcut is you've got to have a good sprayer. Um, now whether you use just a uh, backpack sprayer like this or a you know you make a custom crazy sprayer like Connor has that mounts in uh, a spreader that has a big you know boom on it that's that's completely up to you but you've got to have some sort of sprayer. Um, reason being to maintain your grasses short, you're going to use a lot of different products, you know, between fertilizers and plant growth regulators and, you know, herbicides and any number of other things, you're going to want a good sprayer. Um, now what I have is the Chapin 
20 volt, or this one I, I guess technically is a Black & Decker 20 volt, which is the same thing as the Chapin 20 volt. Um, and the advantages of this is obviously, it's a four gallon backpack sprayer, um, but with it being battery operated, you don't have to pump it. You know, I have had manually pump backpack sprayers, um, but the issue with those comes down to uh, consistency. So, uh, you know, when you're spraying, like I said, these real, these real um, specific products, like a, like a plant growth regulator, for example. When you're spraying, spraying a plant growth regulator, you want consistent coverage all the way across your lawn. And uh, I found when I'm using a hand pump backpack sprayer that my spray is not consistent. So when I switched to this 20 volt, um, I was getting a much more consistent spray. Um, and then you, you know, obviously with this, you can calibrate yourself to the sprayer to know exactly what it takes to uh, cover your specific distances and space that you need. Um, so really, uh, in my opinion, a, a battery operated sprayer of some sort is absolutely essential to uh, maintaining your grass short. Uh, a link for this will be in the description below. I bought this off DoMyOwn.com. Um, I know you can, a, lot of, a lot of places you can find them online or in local stores, but like I said, I'll, I'll put a link to where I got this from. Um, but yeah, so sprayer. We need a sprayer. Alright, so this next one, you don't necessarily 100% have to have this, um, but a lot of people already do. And I still use a lot of granule products to use with a, a manual push spreader. Um, you could go 100% with liquids that you can put through a backpack sprayer or a hosing sprayer or something like that, but I still like using granules. You know, I, for me, I'm not stuck on specific products only to where it's like, oh, this is the only product. You know, I'm not a 100% Malorganite guy, or I'm not a 100% Next Products guy. I am 100% what can I get for the cheapest. So that means sometimes I'm using the push spreader because I found granule uh, herbicides for cheap, or sometimes I'm using the backpack sprayer because I found a, a liquid fertilizer super cheap, or somebody gave me something, or, or this or that, you know. But, you know, a decent spreader um, is all you need. You don't need anything super fancy. You know, obviously, what I have is not super fancy. Um, I've had this spreader for forever. Um, you know, it's just a cheap Scott 2000 Speedy Green. Yeah, you know, nothing fancy about it at all. It gets the job done. You know, you can change the calibration on the that's, that's really all you need. Um, but you have to have some way to put out fertilizer or you know, insecticide or whatever you're putting out. And uh, a decent sprayer will work. Yeah, would I, would I like a Lesco spreader or you know, some fancy Earthway spreader? Absolutely. Um, but for me, this gets the job done. And at this point, I don't see any reason spend the money on on an expensive one. There's plenty of other things that I would rather spend my money on. Alright, so these next two, pretty obvious. You know, pretty much everyone, anyone who's doing any sort of lawn care um, already is probably going to have one or both or one that is capable of being both of these. And that's a Weed eater, whipper snipper for you uh, Australians out there, um, and then an edger. Yeah, the, the blade edger. Um, in my opinion, if you're if you don't edge your um, your curbing and your sidewalks and your driveway, it just doesn't look complete. So what I have um, is I bought a 
DeWalt 20 volt max. Weed uh, eater. Uh, if I could go back in time when I bought this, uh, I may have I may have held out. This is a this honestly has been great. It's a great weed eater. Um, the only issue that I have with this is DeWalt does not have the interchangeable heads. Um, you know, if I could go back in time, I probably would have gone all in and gotten the Ego products because you can interchange the heads and swap them out quick. Um, but I already had a bunch of DeWalt tools, um, so I already had a bunch of these 20 volt max batteries laying around. So it worked good for me. If DeWalt would uh, release a uh, version that you could swap out heads, I probably would get it. Uh, but you got—you have to have a weed eater, obviously. I mean, you know that. Everyone knows that. You're already using a weed eater, uh, mowing your grass lawn. Um, the next thing is the uh, edger. You know, the blade edger. You know, I have the Echo, what is this? The PE 225. Um, this is a standalone edger. This has been a great edger. You know, I, I find when you first use it, if you haven't been edging for a while and, and you don't already have that established edge, it's a little underpowered for that. Um, I think they make a PE 265 as well, which is supposed to be a little bit bigger of an engine and probably would not be as underpowered. But this gets the job done. It does a great job, especially after you establish that good edge. Uh, but yeah, so, shit edger, blade edger, whatever you wanna call it. All right, last, but certainly not least, is a fat rake. Um, this has been my first year having this fat rake and using this fat rake, and uh, this thing is freaking awesome. Yeah, I use it for everything. Um, I know a lot of you probably watched the Pest and Lawn Ginger. He uses this fat rake to help diagnose any issues, and I've I found that it really helps to see what's going on in your grass. Um, also, when you're mowing your grass short, you don't want to have like any thatch at all. So I use this to kind of periodically see what's going on throughout my lawn. Do I need to use a thatch rake? Uh, do I need to get a dethatcher? You know, what, what, do all, what all do I need to do? Um, and this little tool has been awesome. So it's like 30 bucks. You can buy them at Home Depot, you can buy them at uh, Lowe's, wherever spend your hard-earned dollars at, but uh, absolutely worth the 35 bucks. So, that's great, get one. All right, so as far as equipment, that, uh, that pretty much covers it. Um, so let's go out and let's look at the lawn real quick, and let's talk about what all I have done, it's really bright out here, to uh, to get my yard to where it's at now. Um, so yeah, so I mowed the day before Halloween and uh, it's now, Halloween was on Wednesday, now it's Saturday. Um, I probably won't have to mow again unfortunately because it's getting cold. It's getting consistently below freezing every night and uh, ground temps are going down. So um, as far as what it takes to get your grass this way. All right, so to get your grass this short and, and uh, really looking good, in my opinion, man, just just do it. You know, I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, you gradually take it down, you gradually take it down, and you take it down until you get it really short. Um, just do it. Uh, the, the nice thing about grass is it grows back. 
and it tells you what's wrong with it. You know, you, know, you cut your grass super short and it's going to shock it. You know, it's going to yellow, it's not going to like it, but, you know, your grass is going to tell you what's wrong. And once you start consistently mowing it short, it's uh, it's going to adapt and it's going to overcome and, you know, you're, you're going to figure out exactly what you need. You know, it's really, it's really not that difficult. Um, is it, is it a lot of extra work? Yeah. Uh, if you want to mow your grass this short, can you mow it once a week? No. No, you can't. Um, so that's one thing I will say. If you, if you want to do this, if, if this is what you want, if this is what you like, go for it. But understand that it's going to take dedication. Um, during the summer, I mow every three days. And then during the spring and during the early fall, when, when cool season grass is in its, you know, in its prime, in its growing season, I'm mowing every two days. Um, and that's even with using a uh, plant growth regulator. You know, even with slowing it down on growth car, uh, even with slowing it down on growth, you know, you're, you still got to mow it two, every two or three days. Uh, if you wait any longer than that, you're going to see yellowing. Uh, also, in my opinion, if you're gonna if you're gonna go all in and you're gonna mow short, you're gonna have to have some sort of irrigation system. If you don't have irrigation, if your if your grass doesn't have water, it's not going to to grow. It's not going to be happy. You don't get the benefit of the longer grass shading and keeping your uh, soil cooler. Um, you don't have that benefit, so you have to keep it cool through watering. Um, and and watering schedule all, all is going to depend on where you're at. You know. If you're, if you're where it's, you know, 100 degrees every day, you're going to have to water more than somebody where it's only 80 degrees every day. That's just, just how it's going to be. And, you know, I mean, like I said, it really comes down to, you know, your grass will tell you what you need to do. And I had a lot of people tell me that I wasn't going to be able to mow my grass this short because I have fescue in my grass. Well, I mowed it this short. I had it at 5 eighths all summer and the summer was hot it was like 95 100 degrees every day you know, you can do it you just have to figure out what your grass needs um, but yeah I don't know uh, don't know if I've got anything else all right guys well I think that about covers it let me know if, uh, if there's something that I missed or if there's something that you had questions about, you know, or, or anything like that, you know, I'm, I'm an open book. I'm here to help. You know, I'm glad to, glad to answer any questions. Um, you know, you can do it. You know, I'm just a regular guy. I'm just a regular homeowner. You know, I just wanted a different kind of lawn and, you know, decided that this year was the year. You know, it, it's totally achievable and it's and it's a hundred percent up to you yeah you're gonna get people that are gonna come and say hey your grass is too short you can't mow it that short but you know what do what you want to do there's gonna be people that say that it's it's impossible to do it but you can do it you know if I can do it you can do it you know it's uh, it's totally achievable anyways that's uh, pretty much all I got for today. Like I said, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, if you want to tell me I'm stupid and I don't know what I'm talking about, tell me how great I am, I don't care. Um, just let me know. Hey, put it down in the in the bottom. Give me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. Give me uh, whatever. You know, tell me I'm an idiot. I don't care. Um, but yeah, hey, also, one thing, one, one quick thing. Hey, come here. Um... So, I was looking at my, my analytics, and 
It says that 75% of you people that watch these videos have not subscribed. So uh, do me a favor, click, where is it, down here? Click down here, or maybe I'll put it up here. Click the subscribe button. Give me some love. Anyways, that's all we got for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Oh, gosh. You're the only one who uh, he got his number.